The premise of today's video is how to get started in real estate investing. And so there's three things that I want to cover with you. Number one is how do you find the deal? Number two, how do you finance the deal? And then number three, once you have the deal, how do you manage the real estate, all right? So those are the three things I wanna cover with you today. If you're here for that, you're watching the right video, I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of it. So grab a paper and a pen and let's get started, all right? So number one, how do you find the deal? You wanna be a real estate investor, you wanna dive into that pool, what should you do first? Well, let me give you these pointers and they're gonna be very valuable. Number one is, you work with a real estate agent, that might be the easiest way to find the deal and I'll tell you why. Because the real estate agents, they have a lot of access to the inventory, they know what's available for sale and they network among other real estate agents who constantly have new inventory. So personally, I think that there's a lot of vested interest working with a real estate agent, especially as a buyer, and I will explain to you why. Because the seller is actually the one that pays the commission, not the buyer. So in essence, you may as well get the absolute best real estate agent to work with you simply because it doesn't cost you any money. I mean, that's a winner, right? So that would be my quick and easy way to try to find a property specifically if you're looking in a certain area. Now, in a different video that I've done, um, I did point out the fact that if you currently are looking to get involved in real estate investment and you don't own a primary residence, that's your first shoe-in because the terms are a lot better. We're not gonna discuss it that much in this video, but um, if you're not, you know, if you're not an owner of a primary residence and you can pick and choose a track that you wanna live and then kinda approach the real estate agents who's working there and then have them find you whatever it is that you're trying to do, all right? So that would be the first way to try to find a good piece of real estate. Now, there's a few others. Um, you know, nowadays especially, with all the online platforms, you could do a lot of shopping yourself, like Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com. You could literally get on there real quick, see things that have been syndicated to the MLS, which is the multiple listing service, and then bam, you have access to seeing what's available. You may not have access to seeing the property, that's where you need a real estate agent, but at least you could see what's going on in the market, you could see the price points, and you can get equipped as to what you wanna make an offer on, all right? So that would be number two. And then number three would be things such as going to a public auction. I did discuss them in other videos. I'm not a big fan, simply because you're getting into a lot of things that might be slightly over your head, such as title work, different things that may be wrong with the property. Maybe there's people living in the property that you need to get out. You need to buy the property in cash. It becomes a really big headache. I personally wouldn't approach it if it was my first deal. I did say that if I was gonna go during that route, I would go towards bank REOs and I would find out through different banks that have properties that they took back what's available if I wanted to buy that kind of a property. All right, so that would be three ways for you to be able to get those properties, working with a real estate agent, <clears throat> checking online platforms yourself, or trying to check uh, with the local auctions. Uh, there are other ways to do it. Uh, you know, you could network with professionals like CPAs, uh, attorneys, if you're an active investor. You know, divorce attorneys always have people that have disagreements and ultimately the house tends to get sold many of times. And so you could reach out to those groups um, and then, you know, see if there's any opportunities there. But that would be a good platform to start as a real estate investor if you know, you're trying to find a property. I'm gonna move on to number two, which is once you have that property, how do you finance it? I'll tell you this, as a lender, this is something that I know a lot about. However, you have to keep in mind, as a real estate investor, I just wanna say a side note. The money <clears throat> that's being made as a real estate investor, think about it as buying stock. There is the day trader, and then there's the guy who just buys really good companies that are more likely to grow and then they just hold on to those and then the portfolio just grows, right? If I had to bet on over the long haul who makes more money, the day trader, the guy who makes you know uh, some money every day trading stocks, he or she, 
and then some days they make money, other days they lose money over the long haul, or the guy who constantly looks for properties, or in this case, stocks, that are just really great companies, and they hold on to them for an extended period of time. From my experience dealing with a lot of investors, I've noticed that people that held on to their assets for an extended period of time have always made a lot more money. Plus the ramifications of having to pay you know, capital gains and taxes and everything else kind of goes away, or I wouldn't say goes away, but gets reduced as you hold on to things for a longer period of time. So kind of everything plays in your favor. So the reason I'm telling you this is because there's really three ways to make money in real estate. And the first way is you actually have to buy it, which is a big hurdle. And it may be, you know, sounds silly because it's super easy, but it's not for a lot of people. So just simply buying the real estate is basically the biggest hurdle. And then number two is actually holding on to it. So most people get nervous when markets go up and down, just like they do with stocks, right? Stock plummets, everyone gets nervous, they start dumping it. It's a mistake. You gotta hold on to things. And so, you know, I've made some personal mistakes and I can share them with you. I've owned a property before and um, it was in a great area, it was a development opportunity. But, you know, I ended up selling it for, you know, a very small amount. And then just a couple years later, I knew that I should have held on to it. Um, the thing went up like 10 times more than I, what I sold it for. And the funny thing is, uh, I kind of learned a lesson because time and time again, investors told me, just hold on to things. Don't let them go. The second you let them go, you're in a position of losing money. And so just know this, buy, hold, and repeat. That's it. You know, the only regret I personally have in real estate is just not buying more. That's it. Okay, every time you sell, typically in the short run, you might make some money. In the long haul, when you look back 10 years, you probably lost a bunch. All right, so just something to keep in mind. Let's dive into our second point, which is how do you finance the real estate? There's three ways to do it. I'm going to go through all three of them. The first one is QM lending, which is all the lending that you know about. You walk into a bank with your tax returns, you tell them you want to finance a property, and you get a loan. That's your first way of doing it. The second way of doing it <clears throat> is non-QM, which is a non-qualifier mortgage. A lot of people might know the term subprime. Subprime is when you're using an alternative documentation. It's also called alt-doc, alternative documentation, to qualify your income. So you might not be the strongest borrower on paper, but you might have a thriving business <clears throat> where you use a lot of cash and there's a lot of deposits. So you could actually use that to qualify for a mortgage and get a pretty decent loan. So that's number two. And then the third one would be private money funds, also known as hard money, all right guys? So if you need to close on a deal very quickly, um, or there's like, you know, 20 offers and you really want to stand out from the crowd, then the only way to do it is really get in there with private money, close the deal in a week, and then basically refinance out of it. You're going to end up paying a couple more points up front. The interest rate will probably be 3 to 4% higher than the market. But you know what? If it's a great property <clears throat> and you're making a margin at buying, then paying a little more for the loan is really not the end of the world, all right? So we covered getting a property, we covered getting the property financed. We're gonna move on to point number three, which is how do you manage this thing? Well, I'll tell you. The first thing that you wanna look for in an investment property is an area that you know that you can actually rent the property fairly quickly for an amount that's gonna actually cover or wash your principal interest, taxes, and insurance. And if you have HOA or any other thing, such as Melarus, builders, bonds, flood insurance, community, you know, um, association fees, whatever they may be, and that might be different than a homeowner association fee, um, then you gotta make sure all those things are included so this way they get washed out with the payment of your tenant. Now in other videos, which you can watch on my channel, I also discussed the fact that every piece of property typically has a couple thousand dollars worth of repairs every single year. Things break down. 
So in my personal opinion, from my personal experience, you take about $3,000 and you divide it by 12, all right? And you add that in to what your payment is every single month and then you compare that to what the tenant is paying you. So as an example, if I know that my payment is $1,000 every single month for the property, I would probably add an additional $300, make it $1,300. And then, you know, how much rent I'm actually getting from the tenant. Am I getting $1,500? That puts me in a much safer position to know that there's a good chance I'm not going to have to reach into my pocket when something small goes wrong with the property. All right? So that's, you know, that's the first thing, just getting a tenant. And I'll tell you this, you got to get a good tenant in there because depending where you are, I'm in LA and California, and I can tell you this, I've been to court several times. I was in court last month with a tenant. It's very difficult and uh, you know depending on which area you are you may have better or worse luck with how landlords are treated when it comes down to you know like Los Angeles it's very pro tenant landlords have a very difficult time LA City LA County so um, when you're in that journey you got to make sure that one you know where you're buying and number two, you know how to qualify the tenant. There is a service that I use, it's called Smart Move by TransUnion. I'll put a link in the description below. And it basically gives you an opportunity to uh, send the tenant a link on a platform that you control. And it runs their credit and it runs their background and it also gives you uh, an estimate as to what it thinks about the amount of income that they put in, whether it's right or wrong, based on the information that they're able to collect because TransUnion is a credit bureau. And then it gives you a recommendation on whether you should or shouldn't write up a lease agreement and you know, get contractually obligated with them. So that's you know, something to keep in mind. Number two on that is how do you actually collect the rent? I made a mistake and I'm gonna share that mistake with you. I actually didn't wanna deal with tenants sending me payments every single month. So I basically just put in the bank account where they should deposit the rent. This way there's no excuses. The tenant could just deposit the money straight into the account. However, when I went through an eviction process with a tenant, I couldn't stop them from making the payment because they had the bank account. They just deposit the money. And when you're evicting a tenant, you can't collect rent. So that becomes a problem. So I would recommend Zell. If you could have a tenant just Zell you the money, that's great. There are other platforms out there such as Zillow where you could set it up that the tenant could just pay directly and it's, it's kind of like a payment platform. All right, so I would recommend something like that. That would be great because anytime you're counting on getting a check in the mail, there's a million other stories that come with it and why it didn't arrive on time and, you know, got lost in the mail. I personally don't like that approach. Number three, what happens when there are repairs? How is that handled? Well, I'll tell you this. Depending on how many pieces of real estate you have, if you're just starting with one, there's really no need to hire a management company, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. Because you learn a lot being a landlord yourself. Management company doesn't, you know, so much care about how sensitive you are with your budget. If there's a repair, they're just gonna send anyone out there. The bill may be a lot higher. You as a consumer can actually shop the vendors that you want to use. You can build relationships, you can you know, get in touch with a handyman, you can control the costs a lot better than if you've just had a management company who just has a vendor who's a contractor. Payments might be premium, they'll take care of the property. You know, if you have a lot of properties or a building with like, you know, 20 plus units or even over 10 units, you know, you don't want to deal with the tenants, you can factor in the cost of management approximately, you know, 5% because you have a day job, you don't want to deal with that. But if you just have one, two, three properties, then you should learn how to become a landlord and you should learn you know different things that could break down and over time you also learn about how much things cost and you know if you're being overcharged or maybe just something that you can go to the property and do yourself in about 10-15 minutes and save on a service call that's 75 to 150 bucks all right hopefully this gives you a better idea as to what it takes to get started with investing in real estate i can tell you this that there's no perfect scenario out there. If you're looking to get started, just get started. Because like I told you, the way to make money in real estate is simply to be able to buy, hold, and repeat. That's the way you do it 
every single time. So if you're able to start that process, then everything else kind of falls into place, depending on what you do for a living. You know, you'll figure out what kind of financing works best for you, whether you can document or can't document your income. You're just gonna have to know that that's the type of loan you're gonna be able to get to obtain. And there's some financial calculators. I can actually put a link in the description below for a mortgage calculator that I have on my site. So as an example, if you're trying to get a loan for a couple hundred thousand and you're being quoted as an example, 7%, you can simply put that into the calculator. You can see what the payment would be, you know, in a 30 year amortization, which is most common um, with, you know, residential real estate, add in the property taxes, add in the insurance. In LA County, property tax is one and a quarter percent. If you're trying to factor in insurance, it's approximately 0.3%. Gives you some tools, all right? Mortgage insurance, if you're buying it as a primary, later you're gonna turn it into a rental. I've talked about that before. Then mortgage insurance runs anywhere between a quarter to a half a percent. You can factor all these things into the payment. Hopefully this gives you a lot of value. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, please put them in the description below. Let me know about them. I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you enjoy the video, as always, Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I enjoy making these for you. I'll catch you on the next video.